he originated the heavens and the earth, and I am not of the polytheists. Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. No associate has he in this of my commandment, and I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king, there is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant, and I have been greatly unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So grant me protection against all my faults, for none grants protection against faults but thee. And guide me into the best of morals, for none guides to the best of morals but thee. And turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals, for none can turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals but thee. And O oh Allah, make Muhammad successful, and make the true followers of Muhammad successful. If thou didst make Abraham and the true followers of Abraham successful, for surely thou art praised and magnified. And O Allah, bless Muhammad, and bless the true followers of Muhammad, as thou didst bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham, for surely thou art praised and magnified. I mean. You may be seated. In the name of Allah, the Nephis of the Most Merciful, we give praise and thanks to Allah for his coming and appearing to us in the person of Ambassador W. Bar Muhammad the long-awaited Messiah of the Christians and the Mahdi of the Muslims. We thank him for traveling 9,000 miles so that he may find one who was worthy to deposit his very mind into. And he did. He found a man who was worthy of that very task. And that man, he came to a meeting just like this one. And at the end of the meeting, we have, as we always have now, what is called acceptance. And this man walked up and he looked at the master and he said to him, I know who you are. And the master says, yes, but who knows it but you? And kind of pushed him on. But it didn't stop there because a relationship developed between them two. And because of that relationship, we are here today. And the man who uttered those words, I know who you are, he is, we say, the boldest, the baddest, the most courageous black man that has ever lived in the annals of history because he was saddled with a responsibility that no one before him had ever been saddled with it. That was to raise a dead black man and woman. He was born Elijah Poole, but because of the magnificent work he was doing in a place called Black Bottom, Detroit, and later the world, he became known as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Beautiful, beautiful human being. We thank Allah for him and that he didn't leave his post. However, brothers and sisters, I met not Master Bar Muhammad, nor did I meet the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. The man that is causing me, this little brother standing before you, to fall deeper in love with those first two. He walks among us today. We say that he is that messianic figure. He is the voice of God in our midst. He does, he, the honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that before he left, he said, when you see him, look at him. Go where he tells you to go and stay away from where he tells you to stay from. Because he is a very spiritual brother. Well, the man that I speak of, he is our illustrious leader. He's our champion. He's our teacher, our guide, our friend. He is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It is in those three holy and righteous names I'd like to greet you all once again with the greeting words of peace. As-salamu alaykum. Dear family, welcome to our Sunday meeting. I'm so happy to be here today. I'm just happy to have, as that, what's that comedian Ricky Smiley said, I'm just glad I woke up on this side of the dirt this morning. I give thanks to Allah for that because I didn't have to wake up. And here we go again. I get another chance to be of some circumstance in this magnificent universe that Allah has allowed us to be birthed into. Dear family, thank you for submitting to the check procedure. Thank you for humbling yourself. Thank you for giving in charity. He said, what? Charity? The buckets ain't been passed. It's not about the buckets. You came in here to give up your time. That is the most valuable piece of charity you can ever get. Because you can't get it back. But you chose to spend it to hearing of the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So dear family, thank you for that. Because you had to have the right spirit to come into the door. I'm not up here to do any talking today. I have to, as they teach us in, uh, on Friday nights in study group, we're not supposed to do a lot of preaching. So today, I'm not supposed to do no preaching because there's a brother that's getting ready to come up. He's going to help us to bring on our keynote speaker. And he's a, the, our keynote speaker is very dynamic. He's a warrior in the spirit of Allah. He's a helper of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, student minister Rodney Muhammad. But however, 
the brother who is going to precede him. He's going to come up now and he's going to give you some words that, that he wants to share. He is our brother. He is a, a student in the ministry, as am I. He's our brother, David Hassan. Let's bring him on with a round of applause. Aislam Alaikum. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful. I bear witness there is no God but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I greet you all in the greeting words of peace. In the paradise, as we say in the ancient Arabic language of our ancestors, Assalamu alaikum. That's what everybody doing this morning. All praise is due to Allah. Give yourself a round of applause for making the meeting this morning. All praise is due to Allah. You could have been home with your families and doing a lot of other things, but your family's here too, is that right? And in these times, you know, I'm grateful to Allah to have the knowledge of self and to be a Muslim today. Unapologetic. All praise is due to Allah. I don't have a lot to say. Uh, we have a lot of work before us. I just wanted to say just a few words to get us ready to receive this message and to reflect on the work. I'm exceedingly grateful this morning for the honorable minister of Ulusfah. Can I get a witness? Yes, sir. No matter what you're going through in your life, no matter what you've been through in your life, there is nothing in your life that the life of the messenger and the divine servant in our midst have not touched or taught you. And them having to care for a nation, they've come in contact with us. So they have taught on every subject to heal us. Is that right? You're dealing with a man in the honorable minister of far kind that loves us. Is that right? But the people don't know how much this man has sacrificed. So I thank all of you all for just being here today, regardless of what you had to go through to be in your seat. But one thing Minister Farrakhan has taught me just before we bring up our keynote presenter is that if we want to solve our problems and we want to attain the object of whatever we desire in our goals in life, we have to think. Is that right? We have to think differently about ourselves, think differently about our situation, think differently about our people. We have to work. Is that right? Yes, sir. No matter what is confronting you in the morning, you got to get up as the messenger said, and go to work. Is that right? Until you reach the object of your desire. But the third thing, you have to give all praise to Allah. And if you can do that on the good days, and do that on the bad days, it's easy for the believer to say, all praises are due to Allah. Because we will be victorious because the victory has been promised. But we got to go to work. So I just say, brothers and sisters, that it's the faith of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that has us standing here today. And if we would open up the study guides, me and the brother were talking about this morning, if you would go back into the history of the nation of Islam, you can see clearly why Allah put Moses through what he put him through, why he put Jesus through the trials that he put him through. And you can see that Minister Farrakhan and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad are doing what they're doing by the book. But if we can see the greatness and the divinity and the light in them, then what does that say about us as a people and our great future? But we got to come together, brothers and sisters, and show and prove. So at this time, I just wanted to say thank you all for being here this morning. Let us get up and go to work and help the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. At this time, let us bring up our student regional minister here in the Delaware Valley, your brother and mine, student minister, Rodney Muhammad, with a round of applause. As-salamu Due to Allah. Can someone bring me a final poem? Yes. Thank you. Uh, yes. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful God, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the worlds. We thank Almighty God, who is the revealer of all truth and the sender of all prophets, of whom we make no distinction. We do thank Allah for Moses and the Torah, and we thank him for Jesus and the Gospel, and we thank him for Muhammad and the revelation of the Holy Quran. And people say, 
Well, which religion do you belong to? We are here to work with the Messiah until there's only one God, one faith, and one baptism. It's not that we belong to all of those religions. They belong to us. As a student of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's life-giving message, I'm most thankful to Allah for his own intervention in our affairs. In the divine person, of Master Fad Muhammad to whom praise is due forever. And we cannot thank him enough for his servant, the son of man, that he raised up uh, with unequaled wisdom and strong law. And without those two, we could not have the kind of servant that we have in the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. A lot of people like to think of him as just wise, but they don't see that he was fashioned with strong law. That's why he could stand against lawbreakers. And he wanted to make us like that. Because the original people used to have checkmate power. They didn't allow a lot of whispering and talking amongst them. They started investigating and they rounded up everybody. That you can't find everybody. But everybody that you can find, bring them under the light of God's law. Because without the law, we can't survive. I thank Allah for the exalted Christ. A man who started out as an FOI and then he was in the class of the master. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then he moved up to messenger. Mm. And he just kept moving. Why? Because Allah is an evolver. If you hang around, you won't be what you were. When you started out, somebody said, well, how did you get to that? I got to the one who could get me to that. There's a God that does that. We don't do that ourselves. Well, I thank Allah for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. For being a 100% convert to the master. So much so that he said to his students, Allah has made me past tense. Work already done. He made me to take his place among the people. What's his place? His place is God. You looking for God, you should be looking right at him. When will we see the Father? Have I not been with you? The scriptures say all this time and you are asking when will you see the Father when you're looking at me, you see him. He's made me to take his place among the people. And he looked at Farrakhan and said, I'm making you to take mine. So I'm not in the FOI in search of the commanding officer. Because the general orders teach me, you deal with the officer of the day. The day that I'm in, Farrakhan is the officer of the day. Huh? All praise to you, Allah. And uh, so that's where my commands come from. And I'm satisfied with that. So I thank you all for being out. And I say to you, as it is our distinct privilege to say, I salam alaikum. We're on a subject, self-improvement is the basis for community development. When the Honorable Louis Farrakhan delivered that message in 1986, the audience was black, Native American, 
Chicano, Latino, and whites. He was speaking to the human family of the planet Earth. And um, he tried to show that you can take resources, money, and you can take uh, empowerment zones and jobs, the resources from the world order, but he said, the scripture said, what does it profit a man that he should gain the whole world and then lose his soul? You can't make a community better unless the people in the community get better. We want to improve the community, but you want to see change, but you don't want to change. That's what we're talking about. Allah says in the Quran, he changes not the condition of a people until they first change it themselves. Now, I'll be honest with you. Years ago, when I first saw that passage, I said, well, if I can change it, what do I need him to change it for? But he's saying, I got the power to bring change, but you got the door closed. If it sits outside of a closed door, I don't care what it's got the power to do. I'll never experience it because I'm not open to it. If he says, Brother Rodney, your change going to come with knowledge, but my mind is closed to new knowledge. I'm satisfied with the old knowledge. No, I ain't even satisfied with it. I'm dissatisfied, but I'm so damn crazy. I don't know how to accept the medicine that can bring change. Well, you should stop eating pork. I've been eating, we've been eating pork all since we've been here. That don't mean it was right. My mama served me pork. Yeah, you follow that, but you saw your fathers doing it. The Quran say, even though they were in error, they survived on what they were given. They didn't come here with a uh, provided a menu. When we came here, if we'd have had the menu, pork would have been rejected from day one. But they killed off those who knew how to reject pork, and they raised us as babies under them. Yeah, and so we came up doing everything against the nature that Allah had created us in. We can bring change, but the Quran says, but we have to undergo change. In other words, Allah says, I change not the condition of any people till they change their hearts. Because the heart is at the core. We're not talking about the muscle beating in the chest, but the, the, the language of scripture uses that muscle because it's designed to move the blood, the life fluid through the body. But this is talking about the core of a man and woman's mind and the bloodstream of their thoughts. Which carry out in the body. So uh, we talked about how America is caught in a doomsday cycle. Only the religions of the West talk about a doomsday. You go over and see Eastern religions and people who go over there, they're chanting in Buddhism and you're in Hinduism and Taoism and Zoroaster. You don't nobody talk about doom to get to the West. They always talk about an end coming to something and they want to make you think that you're coming to, no, they're coming to an end. And when the Honorable Louis Farrakhan gave an address at the International Press Club, which case I was sitting right there at the table with him, he gave an address in 1993 and they transcribed the address into a book called A Torchlight for America. 
people were criticizing him. Well, the messenger taught the fall of America. Why are you holding up a torchlight for her? Anytime your neighbor's house is on fire and the wind is blowing your way, the fire that's at your neighbor's house will be carried by that same wind and soon your own house will be on fire. Right. So the Honorable Louis Farrakhan said a wise man will get a bucket of water. See, when you're in a world preaching the doom of that world and that civilization, fire is coming. When it finally gets there after people reject our cry, they're going to blame us for starting the fire. You look wise to get a pail of water. And at least look like you part of the rescue crew. You put yourself in a dangerous position to be in a I told you so situation. Mm -mm. So all our change is not the condition of a people. And we're starting to talk from the Financial Times, David Walker, controller there, who has cited that all the things that happened in ancient Rome, these ancient markings are showing themselves up in the American society. And it all got to deal with people and the state of mind and the condition of people. And so, you know, uh, the condition of the people of the United States of America we brought up, that they took IQ and found out that 51 million Americans, their IQ is 85 and below. Mm -hmm. The people who have IQs of 100 and beyond are baby boomers. That's people born between 1950 and 1964. So that means now, so when you're a baby boomer, you learned how to read and write. By the time you graduated from eighth grade, you knew how to read a book. They don't know that now. When I was in fourth grade, they started a practice. Monday, they gave you 10 words. You had to write them out. Then you had to take those words home. Tuesday, you had to bring the definition of all 10 words. Wednesday, you had to write a sentence for the teacher so that she knew or he knew that you understood the words and how they to be utilized. Thursday, they had a column with the words and a column with definitions, and you had to match the word with the right definition. Friday, you had a spelling test. Monday, you got 10 new words. Same exercise. I didn't even realize it, but they was increasing my vocabulary by 40 words a month. So the average person that went to grade school, that's not happening now. Now they've taken away cursive writing. They're dumbing the people down in the United States of America. And the IQs are beginning to show. And the people who were baby boomers, they said, they have an IQ of about 100 and beyond, which means their ability to problem solve is strong. Oh, come on, boy. Now you got a generation of millennials born on third base. <laughs> Never hit the ball, but you're on third base already. <laughs> And you don't have no regard for the people that went to bat for you to get you there. And you know everything, so can't nobody tell you nothing. But you can't even take the ball home. So 40% of millennials are living in the basement of their baby boomer parents. This is how much they know about problem solving. This ain't just black, this black, white, everybody. This is a generation because the country is doing this. And now I'm finding out from David Walker in the Financial Times, this happened in ancient Rome. 
And we're in a modern day Roman Empire. They might celebrate Columbus Day, but Columbus never touched these shores. It was an Italian explorer that touched these shores. But you got to remember, the Romans never died out. They just changed their name to Italians. But these are the Romans. Huh? And so it was really a Roman explorer that founded this land, Amerigo Vespucci, so they named the land after him. All under the purview and the mighty hand of Allah himself. Shaping this thing and getting the stage ready for the final drama of a world that's going to go down. So we're talking, you know, self-improvement is the basis for community development. And under that, we said, make your own neighborhood a decent place to live. Jesus says in the book of John, as Moses lifted the serpent of the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted. What was he talking about? Jesus told them, I've not come to cast away the law of Moses. I've came to fulfill it. So that Jesus, who's a fulfiller, he, that's a conversation. He can't be a prophet. A prophet is not a fulfiller of what somebody else prophesied, right? They're bringing to completion what God has given a prophet to see. And the Honorable Louis Farrakhan taught us, a man is not a prophet until the fulfiller come. That's why he can say he's Messiah. Because without his fulfilling, what Abraham saw, what Moses saw, what Jesus saw, what the prophets before him saw, they're not prophets until confirmation comes. Are y'all listening to me? Then once confirmation comes, then you know that what that man saw was true. Yeah. So we talked about Jesus talking about the serpent of the wilderness. Who is the serpent of the wilderness? This is a hidden history and a hidden work. And we talked about the Caucasian as Yaku's children. It's not a hate whitey address. You can't put that on Louis Farrakhan. He, he teaches evil against whites and stuff. One of his closest companions is a Caucasian priest. And I've heard him say from the Rosham on Savior's Day, he, Father Flager, has been a better comrade and friend than some of the Negro preachers in Chicago. Come on now. He said it ain't about color. It's about character and what's right. Wow. So, uh, we had to talk about what happened to the serpent in the wilderness. See, uh, Mr. Yaqub, the father of this world, started off with a lion doctor like Fauci and a nurse with a needle. And now their world is closing out with a lion doctor and a whole lot of needles out there trying to get you jabbed. Right. Come on, somebody. Right. Yeah. And so the children that came out of this process ended up in an existence uh, where they came back around us to try to turn our civilization upside down. When you turn a people's civilization upside down, you really take. Uh, the anatomy of a person that has the head on top and when you turn them upside down you put the head on the bottom and everything that's on the bottom of that person those extremities are put on the top and that's made to tell us 
that when we're turned upside down and we lose our spiritual composition, come on somebody, when you lose that now, the appetites that live below the navel are reigning supreme in the mind. And we start undergoing a moral collapse. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, there are two worlds inside of us right now. One of those worlds revolves around our appetites. And the other world revolves around an enlightened mind. And each of these worlds is fighting inside of us for supremacy. Right. 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 And if we follow our appetites, we will never improve. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's a beast. When you follow your appetites, you want change. You're going to be dissatisfied. You want change. White people want change. Yes, sir. But all of us that are calling for change want to change. Ooh, say that. Come on. So they came amongst us and turned us upside down. So we ran them from amongst us. We ran them into a place. We called it West Asia. Right. <laughs> but once we got them there, we changed the name from West Asia to Europe. Right, right. You, you, all it wasn't called Europe before we put them there. That's right. They were in the caves and the hillsides of Europe. And then we disempowered them. Like they do us, they move us somewhere. They moved. North Philly was nice. Then what they decided to do once we got there, put money in there. Yeah. they start pulling away the resources. resources. I have a large book at home yeah. where Frank Rizzo had received $500 million for development in North Philly. He re-diverted all that money. Yes, sir. So that the whites that were leaving Philadelphia right. going to the surrounding counties that money was diverted. That's why the roads look so nice yeah. and the curves and everything. And then they didn't spend the money in North Philly. Yes, so when you take away the resources that are used for upkeep, anything you don't upkeep properly, it's going to start falling apart. Come on. Then they say, well, look how the ghetto looks. Wasn't called that when we moved there. Right, right. We were saying, oh, this is nice. I'm going to move on 17th Street. Come on. Let's move over to 16th Street. Yeah. Well, I'm on 14th Street. Right. Yeah, it looked nice when we started out. But once they got us there, the conditioning of us, you talk about a lot changing the condition, the conditioning of us. Right. Turn this area and turn the people into something totally different from the people that moved in there years ago. Right, right. Hey, you on it. Well, why did they do us like this? They could be paying us back. Teach. Teach. Because when we ran them into West Asia, we took the greatest resource any people could have, divine guidance. That's right. The messengers say we snatched it from them. We took from them everything except the language. Except the language. That's right. And without that, they collapsed. Yes, sir. And you know what? Without that, we collapsed. Yes, sir. The only thing that got them up was mercy, mm -hmm. and we sent Musa. Yes. That's right. Come on. And Musa went and began to teach them of the Torah and divine law, and they began to stand up. And look what the messenger said. The messenger didn't say they moved to another continent or no, someplace. Sir. All of a sudden, we start seeing villages and towns. Right, right. After villages and towns, we begin to see cities and nations. Right. And ultimately, the yeah. Commonwealth Teach that history. Go ahead, of go European ahead. nations. They didn't move nowhere. You know what they did? They made their own neighborhood a decent place to live. That's right. Come on. People Come on. vacation in Europe. That's right. They go there and stay the whole summer. Mm. 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 <laughs> but it was divine guidance yeah. that stood them up again. And what did the messenger tell us? The solution to our problem is divine. Yes, sir. We oh, we're looking for the government, this president, that congressperson, this, that, and the other. But the real solution right. is divine. Yes, sir. Mm. And the interesting thing is, 
the, the elected officials that we're looking for to save us, they sworn in with their hand on a Bible. <laughs> Come on. That's never read. Never read. You all following this? Come on, you want it, brother. Yes, sir. Because do we really want to be improved? Because right. without us being improved, there be no improvement of no community. Come on. We've proved that. Yes, sir. Dr. King said, we need to take our mission to the north. And he got to Chicago and he said, look how the black people on the west side of Chicago are living. Mm -hmm. This is inhumane. It's unsafe. It's unclean. It's un unsanitary. And Dr. King started marches over there. Right. It caused a big disruption in Chicago. Mm. And while he was in Chicago, he sat for six hours with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mm. And the messenger Jeez. told him, brother, you're working to get my people out of the slums? Right. Come on. I'm working to get the slums out of my people. Go ahead. Come on now. Why? Because the condition that is around you it's only around us and it stays around us because of the condition that is within us. Right. Years ago, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said he read an article about a spider. And a spider, by nature, is designed to spin a perfectly symmetrical web. He said the scientists of this world tampered with the spider. They injected something in it. Right. And it caused the spider, every time it made a web, it had a little crooked thing in there. Right, right. And they kept the spider spinning webs, and each time it would spin the web, it had the same defect right. in the web spinning thing. And the minister said, this is to show us that what is in the heart ultimately reflects itself in our hand. Right, right. That's why Moses couldn't start a work until Allah showed him a sign. Say, put your hand over your heart. Come on, come on, come on. And both the Bible and Quran say, when he extended his hand, his hand was corrupted. His hand was corrupted because he didn't know how to do a pure work for God because we didn't know our God. Right, right. He even had to ask him, who should I say sent me? That means he didn't know him. If you didn't know him, you couldn't do his work. You could only do the work of Pharaoh and his people and the mystery gods that they had given us. Go ahead, go ahead. So all of our work was corrupted, but once he raised them up into his wisdom, he said, now put your hand over your heart. Mm. And when he put his hand over his heart and extended it, the Bible says, the Quran says, his hand was restored and it was pure. Right, right. People accuse the Honorable Elijah Muhammad of being corrupted, but you know he produced a pure work in an ugly yes, situation. Go ahead. Go ahead. He made clean men and women yes, sir. right in the same ghettos right. Right. that our enemy had designed to corrupt us. Right. He showed us that Allah can change our condition if we're willing. Yes, so he told us he came and said, I'm ready to set them in heaven at once if they would submit. That's right. Man. Um, before I go into just a couple of the things, you know, because you can be in the hospital and need something in you cut out of you. You can stay in the hospital a month with that disease thing in you, but if you don't sign a consent form, you can sit there in the hospital, you just die in there. But you sign the consent form, you give them permission to go to work on you. Right, right. Well, that's how our condition is. You don't want to sign a consent form. Come on. Only a law can work on you now. That's right, that's right. Once your enemy has worked on you, you can't work your way out of this situation. Only a law can work on you. But guess what? He respects you and loves you so much. He ain't going to force it on you. Right. Consent, yes, sir. Submit. Submit consent. Sign the consent form. Yes, sir. Come on, family. Give your God permission right. to work on you. That's Come right. on. That's right. Sign the consent form. Give him permission right. to take a dead man and woman and set the depth of his knowledge 
and wisdom on a dead mind. Yes, sir. And watch that mind come to life. Sign the consent form. Come on. <laughs> and let him take a Negro and make a God. Go ahead. In the Go face on. of our destroyers. Right. He can do it. Well, I don't know, Muhammad. You don't have no. I got evidence. That's right. Right? I got clear evidence as the Quran say. All I got to do is point to Louis Farrakhan. Come on. Come on. And I can show That's you right. a man that they had hoped to take down. That's he is such a good citizen, they ain't got nobody on the planet that's a match for him. Right, right. With the character that he has shown and demonstrated and the courage. Now, um, look at this in the Quran, just so we know that a large part of our condition is done by our open enemies. We didn't just end up like this on our own. He, he, the root of devil is not evil doer. The root of devil is not just one who does devilishment. The root of devil, the definition is slanderer and accuser. Mm. Slanderer and accuser. He's always accusing us of something. That if we woke up, we would see that what he's accusing us of doing is what he did to us. That's right. Well, you guys, you, you, you're killing and tearing up your own community. Before we ever start killing each other, they were looting in our communities and burnt down every town that we built after slavery. That's right. That's right. That's a history he doesn't want to talk about. That's right. That's why other people can get reparations to Japanese. That's why other people, we even shortchange ourselves on reparations. Right. Muhammad, ain't you for reparations? Yeah, but real reparations, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan taught us, you don't, a Negro mind don't know how to give itself justice. Well, I think these whites here in America owe us something. Yeah, they owe you something, but all of Europe owes you something too. Teach, teach. And the white Arabs owe you something. Teach. We need to bring them all to the table. That's right. And any Africans that collaborated with them, they owe us something. Everybody get to the table Go ahead. Go ahead. for the payback. Yes, sir. Come on. No. Look at this in the Quran. In the 18th surah, it's called the cave. This is the work that Jesus cites. And it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And thou mightest see the sun when it rose decline from their cave to the right. And when it set, leave them behind on the left. While they were in a wide space thereof, this is of the signs of Allah. He whom Allah guides, he is on the right way and whom he leaves in error, thou wilt not find for him a friend that can guide him aright. Right, right, right. What is he talking about here? Somebody was a cave dweller. It's clear here. And the, the rising of the sun was on his right, which means now that the mouth of the cave was facing the north. Right. And when the sun rises on the right, it then sets on the left. So no sunlight comes to the mouth of the cave. Right, right, right. The Quran says this is not just a cave now, but all the northern nations. Mm -hmm. Come on. That the original people that are in these northern nations, they cut off the light of God from us and made sure no teacher could ever get into us. We're in, the, we're in the north, that's why it's called North America. Yes, sir. And in the Masonic order, when Hiram is hit in the head, it means he's divested of all his knowledge. Right. Carried on a westerly course, that's the course of the slave ships. Yes, sir, yes, sir. 
brought here, laid in a shallow grave, which was a King James understanding of the Bible. Right, right. Which left us shallow, but we have been divested of knowledge, and they cut off every teacher from getting to us. That's right. We That's only right. had their interpretation and understanding of the Bible mm. until the Honorable Elijah Muhammad came among us. And when he came among us, he didn't introduce the Quran to us till 1960. That's right. That's right. So Come what on. did he use from 1934 to 1960? He used the Bible. He showed that. He showed that. He showed the church, black and white, the yes, power sir. that yes, is sir. in that book. Oh, yeah, brother. You can't talk about clean men and clean women because we had a Quran. No, we had a man that the Quran. He's the. Uh, it's the root of him, but he gave us. Bible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And his perfect understanding of it, he showed us what could be done with it. Beautiful teaching. Mm. Beautiful teaching. Right on it. How long were they in the cave? How long did they tarry? There's an argument in the Quran, but it shows that yes, Allah only knows how long they tarry, but it even talks about a 300 year period. That 300 year period is not talking well, about Europe no, now, sir. it's talking about the setup of Christianity. Wow. Teach, teach. Teach. See, it was 300 years after Jesus was gone. That's when they made up the religion. They right. didn't make it up while he was here. No, sir. That's why you hear Minister Louis Farrakhan yeah. talking about Jesus don't know nothing about what you set up. Right. Come, on, come on, come on. Come on. Christianity and true Christian theology are not the same thing. Yes, sir. That's right. True Christian theology is to see Jesus in the proper light. Right, right. right. See, in Philadelphia was Bright Hope Baptist Church <laughs> that was the first to put up a black Jesus. Come on. They started to see him in a proper light. Right. But when Ebony Magazine put Jesus as a black man on the cover back in the late 60s, remember, uh, they got a lot of pushback from black America. Mm -hmm. Come on. Because we have been trained to see him only as white. Right. 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 Man, you, you got to know something about the history of what you've been in. That's right. And what these fights are all about. The messenger took us to the root of these fights. Right. Yes, sir. You are. Mm -hmm. When Malcolm was with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, of course, he taught on the black man's history. Yes, sir. And he went all the way back to the secrets that are locked up in the vaults mm. of Mecca. Yes, sir. And we're taught that every 25,000 years we write Quran again. That's right. That's right. Then where are they? They're locked up. That's right. That's right. <sighs> you on it, brother. Good teaching. No, we, we really, sometimes we've got to take time to think. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes, I used to hear my, my prayer, my sacrifice, my life is all for a law. That's right. But it said, not only that and my death. Yes, sir. So I, if I'm praying to a law who's made himself manifest in the person of Master Fard Mahari, That's right. That's right. if I'm sacrificing, in my life because of his coming and what he set in motion. And if I'm trying to line my life up with the life that he wants for us, then when I die, I don't want to follow the Sunnis. That's right. Come on, come on, come on. Which Allah is your death for? No, we got to think. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. Some people have, have, have denounced embalming. You don't, it, it's not encouraged, but wait a minute. Jesus is embalmed. Teach. When Teach. I read the lessons, well, yes, why did we take Jerusalem from the devil? How long ago? Say, because one of our righteous brothers, who was a prophet by the name of Jesus, was buried there. The messenger said he's embalmed. That's right. That's right. He said his body is going to last for 10,000 years. That's right. It's That's been right. 2,000 already. He said we got 8,000 more years to go. That's right. The Egyptians were going there. Now, it just came on um, the History Channel or one of those. It showed the Muslims that are over there and the tomb of Jesus. Isn't this something? Come on, come on. 
Come on. This ain't make believe what we're dealing with. Real talk. They're being made to manifest what the honor but you ain't gonna make him no liar. No, sir. No, sir. Go pull it up now. They were walking the streets, they're talking about his tomb and how his body yes. was cared for. And it's, and we were told it's the Muslims that are guarding him. Yes, sir. <laughs> right? Yes, sir. Go in the Old Testament, you see the Jebusites. That's right. Come on. Go in the Old Testament, you see Salam. Salam. That's right. That's right. There we go. So when you take uh, the uh, Jebus, yes, Ariel, and Salam, you get Jerusalem. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. The Europeans that converted, they're not the originators of that city. No, sir. No, sir. Not at all. Oh. Powerful teaching. Yes, sir. So, um, you know, they come out of Europe after the serpent is lifted up. The scepter of Moses' law with two serpents wrapped around it. Notice it's on the medical buildings. Yes, sir. World Health Organization, all the clinics we go yes, to and everything. Because Mr. Yaku started yes, with a doctor and a nurse. He had a whole lot of people, but he made sure it was a doctor and it was a nurse there. Yes, sir. Final Call newspaper showed that over the years, we had 200 black-owned, black-run hospitals. And for every 40-something thousand black people, there was a hospital right. that was black-owned, black-run. Right. I was born in a black-owned, black-run hospital in Chicago. Come on. But they are all closed up now. Closed. We have been convinced to integrate and that you don't need a black hospital because we'll all be included. Right? Yeah. Now we run around talking about health care. And we don't even know the history right. Right. of all the hospitals that we used to have and the things that we used to do for ourselves. We act like we come up with a new idea. Mm. We ought to do this and that. We did all of that. That's right. And they shut it down. Shut it down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we cooperated with that and became a consumer social group we're managed by another whole people. Yes, sir. And we want change. So um, we're right in the midst of, you see, Brother Ishmael's been talking about up with Jesus and down with Santa. You know, when I came in the nation, the only time we fasted during Ramadan was in December. Right, right. right. Come on. We didn't, we didn't fast no other time. It was December because the honorable Elijah Muhammad recognized yes. the Quran recognized. Yes, sir. Allah, foreseeing God, recognized. Come on. If you're sick, and no one is more sick than the Negro. Right. Come on. Right. Come on. He works against his own best interest daily. Yes, sir. And if you're sick and you're on a journey, we're far away from home. Jeez, jeez. We're far away from our right mind. Right, right, right. Dorothy was far away from home. She thought a balloon could get her there. The woman told her, you need to click your heels. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go your ahead. problem ain't traveling somewhere else. You ain't got to go nowhere else. You need right to get involved with yourself. Right, right there. Self-improvement is the basis for community development. Yes, sir. You ain't got to go somewhere else to find what's better. You just got to get better. That's right. My God. <laughs> so, um, they want to tell us, well, December 25th, the day Jesus was born. Well, that's getting kind of old now. Yeah. People are waking up to that. Yes, sir. But don't you ever, don't you ever dismiss and minimize the power of a lie. Yes, sir. Let me show you what a lie worked like. Yes, when, you, when you're little, I thought it was a Santa Claus. I, I used to ask my mother, you know, as a little boy, did we leave something out there for him? Come on now. I don't want Come him on. to pass us up now. <laughs> but I Real grew talk. up right. to Real find talk. out there's no Santa Claus. Oh, Heartbroken. <laughs> and most that grew up, they found out there's no Santa Claus. So once you found the truth, Rather than telling your children the truth, you pass the lie on. Yes, That's how powerful a lie is. Yes, sir. Come on. That's true. Yes, sir. 
Come on. I didn't teach mine that. Yes, sir. And they're fine. Yes, sir. But you know, there's we panic. We think all oh, the child's gonna be all messed up if we tell them ain't no Santa Claus, ain't no No, they messed up now with you telling them all this. That's right. That's right. Because children they think. And what we do, we try to snuff out the power of their thought. Yes, sir. So they ask a question like, Mama, how can Santa Claus get to all these houses? Come on. <laughs> we don't say, well, you know, you got something there. It does seem, it looks impossible, doesn't it? We ain't got no chimney. Yeah, you know. <laughs> how can he get to all these houses and get to everybody and get them something? And rather than us showing them and complimenting their skills of intelligence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We go right there and dumb them down. Yes. No, he, he, he gets it done. Magic. Mess around down here and get carjacked. Go ahead. Go ahead. You Come and on. Rudolph. Come on. All the red nose reindeer messing around now. Huh? Yeah. You, you know what this is. I know y'all don't like this. Right? Go ahead, Muhammad. You on it. I love waking up. Come on, now. Come on. To the truth. And so the honorable Elijah Muhammad realized we were sick on a journey. So the Quran says, so pick a like number of days. That's right, right. That's right. And the messenger realized we could fast with the Muslim world during Ramadan and everything. But then you get into December and it's like you never fasted. Right, right. Look at the numbers. Because these folks work on you. Come on. Look at the numbers. From Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, mm. to December the 31st, the merchants make 40% oh, of all the money they make all that. year, Go they ahead. make it right in that little That's period. Right. I mean, they got, they got folks tied up, and they stimulate your uh, appetite. That's right. You got a world revolving around your appetite, your appetite for things. And don't think just because a lot of people stop putting all the lights out over their house and everything yeah. and singing Christmas carols and out there. Some of the Muslims got the spirit of Christmas. Come on, now. say it ain't so. <laughs> they, they disappear on Christmas. We know you're off work. Right. <laughs> you out there, what you doing here in the store? They, they said they had a sale right. or something. Come, you ain't got no Wait, business in here. Come on, uh, now. Come on, now. Lord Real talk. Mercy. Real talk. <laughs> Just because we don't fast in December no more, don't think the spirit of Christmas can't get into you. <laughs> and pretty soon you're frolicking away from your own Islam that you claim. And they cause you to start unraveling right at the end of the year. You was holding it together. Come on. You, you got through the 4th of July. You got Come through on. Labor Day. Come on. Come you on. got through Thanksgiving before yeah. Christmas. Oh, here we go. They start singing chestnuts roasting. Come on. It just finally just got to you. Pretty soon they get you on enough Christmases, you disappear Ooh, as a soldier. Mm -hmm. Real talk. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and there's a large religious decline yeah. in the country, and Christmas ain't helping. Come on. Why are people, more people leaving? The church, more people leaving, and the president of Rwanda, he said he don't care if church, he done closed up 3,000 churches and mosques. Come on. He ain't letting no, he ain't letting no imams, he ain't letting no preachers hustle the people. He said, before you can set up a mosque or a church in Rwanda, you got to show me a degree that you've actually studied something. Mm. Jumping up on the podium and hustling the people. In the name of God. Dirty religion. Yeah, he got more sense than we do. So what is this about the 25th? First of all, Jesus wasn't born on the 25th of December. No, sir. No, sir. And according to the book of Luke, the shepherds were watching the sheep graze by night. That could never happen on December the 25th in Palestine. Come on. It's too cold, plus the sheep are already uh, uh, away. Yeah. Yeah. from grazing in the, in, the, in the thing. 
So that you're not going to find nobody out there like that. No, and then you've got you to think about the same people that wouldn't even, we ain't talking about the ones that killed Jesus uh, in the scripture. The same people that did that wouldn't even let his mother stay in the, coast, in the hotel. Come on now. She stopped at the Marriott. They said, we don't accept <laughs> y'all yeah. over here. Wow. So we're even taught she had to right. give birth in a manger. Right, right. And, 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 you know, our history here, when you go searching for your roots, they got this thing now you can get up with uh, Henry Louis Gates and others and go after your roots. You, you can't go to the library to find the records of your people. You know why? Because the slave master didn't see you as a human being. So you're listed with his inventory of animals, the beasts. The domestic beast of the field, that's where you listed. That's where Mary and Jesus were recorded. No. The, the 25th of December is an evil man's birthday, Nimrod. And before we close, I just want to say something about him. See, Nimrod broke the civilization of Moses. The civilization of Moses was to last for 2,000 years. He brought darkness on the community of believers. It was so dark that by the time Jesus gets on the scene and you open the book of Matthew, you see some characters that ain't nowhere in the first 39 books of the Bible. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes. They're nowhere in the Old Testament. They weren't around Solomon. They weren't around David. They certainly weren't around Abraham. Nowhere. How did they just show up? Where did they come from? Just to abbreviate that, they came from Babylon. They were, they were trained under the Babylonians. And the Babylonians were known to take the best minds in your nation to bring into her own. That's how Daniel and the Hebrew boys got there. So Nimrod out of Babylon, he's responsible for many of the false gods. We don't have time to go into all of it, but between the Greeks and the Romans, and that's why the, the true name of the Roman Empire was the Greco-Roman Empire, because the Greeks had a lot of influence on the culture. The Greeks had, um, they had myths of Zeus coming down to Earth from Olympus, right? having sex with women and having children, and they call them demigods. So the whole concept of God coming down and getting a woman pregnant, it was already in existence. Come on now. Let's wake up. See, we don't properly understand the scriptures. Nimrod was so wicked, he married his own mother. He had sex with his mother and had a child. When Nimrod died, the, the, the woman to hold power, Samiri, wanted to hold power. What she did, she told the people that the spirit of Nimrod was in the evergreen tree. That's where your Christmas tree comes from. It's evergreen. It's green in the summer. It's green in the fall. It's green in the winter. It stays green. She's saying the spirit of Nimrod will forever be with you. And even to this late date in uh, 2021, the spirit of Nimrod is here. They took out Christ to say Christ mass or the masses behind Christ because it's obvious now that the behavior of the people ain't got nothing to do with Jesus Christ. So they put X mass. X is a letter. But X is also a symbol in mathematics. And you got to solve for X. And X represents in mathematics the unknown. So the masses are following that which they know not. And the only hint you have of what or who they're following is you have to go from the known to get to the unknown. What we know is that during this period of time, they're drunk more. There's more drugs sold. 
There's orgies, there's prostitution, there's all kind of things, that, something that Jesus never did. But they're talking about Merry Christmas. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't want us to get drunk in this season. He wanted us to walk sober. So he had us fast during December, plus for people who came from eating three meals a day, we would have never made it on some of them long days. Talking about not eating all day. Now the Negro need a short day. You got me off pork, Muhammad, now. You know, don't have me trying to go a whole two, three days without eating. But I'm saying we had shorter days. And you know, for people who never fasted in December, you got to be careful because you can fast in April and May and all of that, but they work on you in December. If ever you needed vigilance, you know, it's at the end of the year, and it represents the end of the Caucasian's world. He's going to do everything to disqualify you and I for God's kingdom. There's so much more we could share about Christmas, but you know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad took one of the most important days in a Christian's life, and he superimposed over it one of the most important times in a Muslim's life. He put Ramadan right over Christmas. Yes, sir. Come on, man. And for us in the nation, it got rid of Christmas, and it helped us to begin to see Christ. That's the real power of this day. See, Aurelian is the one who made December the 25th, the birthday of the unconquered sun, because the sun in the winter solstice is starting to make its way back by staying out a little longer in the sky. So they're saying the sun's power is coming back, and the sun is being resurrected. And so they pass this on about Jesus Christ, the resurrected sun, and they wanted to say he was born on that day also. But it's not designed, none of it's designed to get you and I to serve Jesus Christ. It's to serve them. Their aim is, is power, dominion, and what? How to master the original man. And if, if they want, that means everything that they have us doing is to serve them. Now, most, most whites don't know this. But the wise ones among them, they certainly know it. I didn't get to read some of David Walker's, but we'll talk about that because he cites the things that happened in ancient Rome, and we can see these things playing out to us today. We thank you for being with us, and we hope you continue to come with us. We're at this place temporarily as we get ready for another place for, you know, our mosque. But, you know, the scripture says, forsake not your assembly one with the other. Because God knows something the human being is a social creature. You know why? Because his God is. Right, right. God plans to dwell with his people when it's all over. That means he don't want to be alone. He wants to be with people, but he got to make you right to, for him to be among you. He's a social creature. The first act he did after his own self-creation, according to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, is from himself he made woman. And then he said the purpose for her was for her to help make him another man. He's looking for company. So when you believe in God and try to get through, I don't know if it's a correspondence course you're following or whatever, and you forsake assembling with one another, you're playing a dangerous game. Because you're minimizing the work of Satan. And the messenger said, you can't fathom the depths of him. So let's be careful. We thank you all for being out. As-salamu alaykum. All right. Let's receive Brother Joseph. Let's give him a round of applause coming on. Thank you all for being out again. As-salamu alaykum. Uh-huh. Praises due to Allah. Let's give him another round of applause. You got Delaware Valley Student Regional Minister Rodney Muhammad. Praises due to Allah.